Look at my hair. Woo! Ow. What's going on? <laughs> What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Groovy Thursdays. Welcome to Terrytown, New York. I'm still on my tour with Steve Hackett. I have three shows left. But I also have some Groovy Thursdays videos to put out before this year is over. So that's what I'm doing here today. The little talking portion of this tune, Bat Country, from the, from the band Avenged Sevenfold, from their record, City of Evil. Ooh, it's very rock and roll. It's very rock and roll. Let's get into it. So the reason I chose this groove this week is because, well, for a couple of reasons. A, it's a little bit of a departure for the way I usually play. I mean, I'm a rocker at heart for sure. I love metal music. I love to try and play metal as best I can. Um, and so, you know, this song is a really good challenge for that. It's not too difficult. It's speedy. You know, it's up-tempo. But the parts aren't so hard to where if you're learning how to play metal, you could probably learn this particular thing. I also have a pretty cool connection to the band Avenged Sevenfold. Let me tell you this quick story, and then we'll get into the groove. A long time ago, many, many moons ago, when I was just getting started playing in the music business, I was about 20 years old, I was in a band with Mr. Brian Hayner. Brian Hayner is the father of Brian Hayner Jr., a.k.a. Sinister Gates, the guitar player in Avenged Sevenfold. I watched Brian Jr. grow up from a very little kid. You know, playing a little bit of guitar, following in his father's footsteps. Brian Hayner Sr. is a fantastic musician. He's a great comedian, great writer. Dude is a killer musician. So, uh, Sinister Gates, Brian Jr., definitely has the lineage within his family of great musicians, for sure. While I was working at Kevin Gilbert's studio after Kevin passed, uh, Brian Jr., Sinister Gates, was in a band with The Rev, the original drummer for Avenged Sevenfold, called Pinkly Smooth. We did a little bit of recording at Kevin Gilbert's studio. Unfortunately, that master has been lost. They made a record after what we did together, but the master we did, I have no idea. Two-inch tape just disappeared after all the craziness of Kevin's studio changing hands and stuff like that. Then before you know it, Avenged Sevenfold comes out and they turn into a very successful, great rock and roll heavy metal band. Um, I saw them for the first time live, gosh, before the pandemic, maybe 2018 or so, 20, maybe even 2017, I forget. But in Fort Wayne, they played at the Coliseum and uh, Brian, a.k.a. Sinister, I'm going to say that through the whole video, um, got his tickets to go see the show. And it was, a, it was a killer concert. Brooks Wackerman is playing drums for them now. And Brooks is a fantastic musician. His whole family, the whole Wackerman family, of course, are awesome players. So Avenged Sevenfold is in good hands. Unfortunately, the Rev, a.k.a. James or Jimmy, passed away way back in 2009. It's really sad because he was a great, great player and way too young to go for sure. Um, but, he, you know, he left a legacy. A lot of Avenged Sevenfold fans really appreciate what he did and the, uh, the gift he gave us all in his drumming. So with all that being said, let's get into a bit of Bat Country. For this week's video, I took the, basically the first section of the tune. So you're getting a lot of grooves. You're getting a lot of value for your time this week on our Groovy Thursdays Hang. I got the intro when the band first kicks in. I have the uh, first verse, then like the first pre-chorus, and I stop right as they get to the chorus of the tune. So there's a lot going on here. And really, it's not that hard when you break it down. I checked out a lot of transcriptions online because this is a pretty famous piece for the band and for drumming in general, right? And everything that I found, and I, I mean, I didn't spend that much time looking, but I definitely found three or four different transcriptions. And the way they're written out, to me, seems to make it a lot harder to figure out, especially if you're new to this style of drumming, you've never heard it before, anything like that, if you're brand new to this particular piece. So let's start here. The tempo I have it at is at 250, quarter notes at 250, which is a good clip, right? It's like about like that. But when you write out the transcription at that tempo, you're left with a bunch of eighth notes and just a couple of 16th notes here and there. Most of the transcriptions I saw were written at 125, which is not wrong. It's just that's what they were written at. But then you have a lot. Everything's written in 16th notes with some 30 seconds thrown in. And the page is really dense. You have to really concentrate to see what you're seeing there. At 250, it clears up the page a lot easier, a lot better, in my opinion. The whole thing is in 4-4 time, but there is an exception in my mind. We're going to start with the first section of the tune. When the band first kicks in, it's just a bashing rock beat. 
there is a pattern to the kick drum that I may have gotten slightly wrong compared to the recording, but it's really close. I think if you play it this way, it'd be okay. There's, I think I'm missing one kick drum on beat number two with the snare drum. I apologize. I didn't know that until after the fact when I listened. I go, oh, I might have missed that. But I think it's close here and you get the idea. It's just two and four on the snare drum. You're crashing your ride cymbal and you're going really fast, hard, frenetic, and with lots of energy. It's the second section of the tune is where there's a little bit of difference in my transcription compared to everybody else's that I've seen. Every other transcription I've seen about this second section of the song is written in 4-4 time. Now, that is not wrong at all, but to me, it makes it harder. How I have it written is a bar of three, two bars of four, and then a bar of five. That repeats, and when you do it the second time, you're adding in double kick drum. The reason I'm counting it out like that is because of where the accents fall. It just seems natural to count it out like that. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Dunga teka teka, dunga teka teka teka, dunga teka teka teka, dunga teka 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 teka. One and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and five hand. Now, let's talk about why it's in four, four time for the other transcriptions. So you have a bar of three, then two bars of four, and a bar of five. Well, that last bar of five and the bar of three, put them together, they equal eight, divide by two, you have four, so it can all be in four, but then all those accents fall on upbeats and it's all in the in-between notes. And to me, it just made it more difficult to, to, to figure out. If you put those accents as downbeats of the bar, to me, it just makes it simpler. If you're gonna learn anything hard, any kind of difficult music, make it easier on yourself. There's no point to make it harder uh, just because. And again, the way the other transcriptions are written are not wrong. To me, this just makes it clearer to figure out. Okay, so with all that being said, that first bar of three, you have crash on one, then you have eighth notes on beats two and three. Two and three and. Bar number two, crash on one, the rest of the bar is eighth notes. I have it written as the second eighth note, one and, as a rest. But it could be a ghost note. You know, you're just kind of filling in the space, really. Same for bar number three. Then for that first bar of five, you have a crash on beat one. Then he's throwing in a couple of hertas to fill in the rest of the bar. A hertha is a, a rudiment. Basically, you're just going, you're playing eighth notes back and forth. Well, you add in a 16th note in there. So on beat number two, instead of going just two and, you're going two e and. That's a hertha. That middle note there, that's what makes the rudiment called a hertha. So you have two e and, then on beat three, you have three, and then you have and of the last two 16th notes. So you have two e and, three e and a, okay? Two e and, three e and a, and then four and, five and are all eighth notes. Let's sing out that bar five real quick, slowly, just so you can feel it here. Here we go, pulses here, two, three, four. One, two e and, three and a, four and, five and, okay? One, two e and, three and a, four and, five and. One, two e and, three and a, four and, five and. Just bring it up to tempo at 250 and you'll have this one down, no problem. It's cool because it adds a little bit of spice to that one bar. The bars prior to that bar five, he's playing eighth notes, all rim shots, nice and loud. Adding in those little hertas in the bar of five just gives it a little, little special sauce, which is cool, right? Then you repeat that same amount of bars, except on the repeat, you add in double kick drum. I'm sorry, if you're not a double kick drum player, it's gonna be really hard to do this at tempo with a single pedal. If you can, that's awesome, awesome. If you can't, just slow it down just to kind of learn this pattern if you wanna do it that way. But if you have a double pedal, this is a great exercise to practice double pedal playing. Remember, the accents are exactly the same, all on the downbeat, the way I have it written. That first bar of three, you have a crash on beat one, you fill the rest of the bar up with eighth notes. The same on the next bar, the bar of four, crash on one, the rest of the bar is filled with eighth notes. Bar number three, crash on one, fill it up with eighth notes. Bar number five, the second time around, it's, you crash on one, fill the rest of the bar with eighth notes, there's no hurt to in there this time, it's all eighth notes. But what you're doing is you're gonna start moving around the toms and you're playing the kick drums with your hands. 
and he's moving around the toms a little bit. So on that first bar of three, on beat number three, he goes with the rap tom for those two eighth notes for three and. On that first bar of four, he starts on the snare drum, but on beat three, he goes up to the rap tom for two hits, two eighth notes, and then down to the floor tom for two eighth notes. He repeats that same thing on the second bar of four. And then on the bar of five, he goes up to the rack tom on beat three for three and, and then back on the snare drum. So it's just snare for one and two and, rack tom on three and, and four and five and on the snare drum. So pretty simple movements, but at tempo, it's hard. And you gotta just get the coordination of going up to the tom, down the floor tom, and up and back and forth, that kind of stuff, and keep the whole flow going at tempo with power and just passion when the whole thing. Right after that, get back into bashing. Crashing, riding on your crash cymbal, I should say. Snare drums on two and four. The kick drum pattern is pretty simple. It's like this. Boom, ga, do, do, da, do, do, da, do, do, da, do, da, do, do, da, do, do, da, do, do, da. That's a pretty straight ahead rock beat, just fast and, you know, passionate. Those second two bars, you go to eighth notes on your kick drum pedal. If you listen to the tune, he's following along with the guitar players. It's a great little add to the... Uh, add to the, the spice, okay? Two bars straight like that. Then double kick drum. And then back, okay? So you repeat those four bars twice. Then you play another four bars back to the straight ahead bashing beat two and four on the snare drum. Then the last four bars before you get into the chorus are not really difficult. They're just difficult in that they're fast and you gotta play them with power the best you can. So those first two bars, you're gonna start playing with snares on the down beats and kicks on the up beats back and forth. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, just like that. Your crash cymbal is playing with your snare drum on all the down beats and the kick drums are in between. So snare kick, snare kick, snare kick, snare kick, crash kick, crash kick, crash kick, back and forth, baka, 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 baka. And when you do this, hit the drums hard. Might be loud in the house. You might get some complaints from the family, but just say, listen, I'm rocking out right now. I need to hit the drums hard, okay? Sorry, you have to just put up with me for a little while. It'll be over soon and I'll get back to playing quietly after that. But for now, gotta rock out. Then, last two bars, a fun triplet exercise. You're gonna play the bell of your ride cymbal and your snare drum on all the downbeats. Pretty simple there, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then on the other two notes of the triplet, so one and a two and a three and a four ender like that. The andas are your kick drum, double kick drum pedal. And I'm doing with right foot first and then left foot. So hand right left, hand kick kick, hand kick kick. And with the snare drum there, it's just take it to get 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 Baka, one, two, three, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, right? Do that. You can practice just that really slowly as an exercise and get some nice coordination between your lower half and your upper half of your body. So snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, right, left, snare, right, left. Do the same thing. Add your right hand with your left hand. No flams. Keep them nice and solid. Play them together. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right kick, kick, hand kick, kick, hand kick, kick, hand kick, kick. Build it up, build up the tempo, and you're gonna get some nice, fast double bass drumming with just that one little exercise. And really, that's about it. The hard part of this groove is that verse, right, where I have it written as a bar of three, two bars of four, and a bar of five. But again, those accents are right on the downbeat as I have it written like this. To me, it makes it easier. The rest of it, is there's patterns in the kick drum for sure. Play those patterns like that, but it's two and four. And it's a two and four rock beat, just fast and powerful. So if you just take it in little chunks like that, it's a lot of fun. You got some nice double bass practice here. Take it slowly if you have to. Got a little Herta thing thrown in there too. So it's a lot of little fun, little nuances about this first section of this tune. The Rev was a great drummer. He had played a lot of really cool parts in a lot of Avenged Sevenfold songs. So if you've never heard it, please go check it out. It's definitely worth your time. And if you want to hear another great drummer, Brooks Wackerman, who's their drummer right now, is just awesome as well. So there's lots of great drumming to be studied from the band Avenged Sevenfold. If you like what's going on here at Groovy Thursdays, I ask that you like this video, share it with all your friends, subscribe to the channel, bring on the comments and suggestions for future grooves. I'm out of here now. I have to go to sound check with Steve Hackett. I'm very excited. I have only three shows left and there's only... Gosh, a few more grooves left for this year. The year's almost over, so have a great week, everybody. Be safe, 
keep on rocking, practice your drums, have a lot of fun, play with passion, and we'll see you next week. Cheers.